Right, channel roundup time. Something I try to do on a monthly basis. I don't always manage it. It depends what else is going on. Now, I discovered some old B-roll that I had languishing in the corner of one of my hard drives last week. I know the footage isn't the best. It was shot some years ago on a much older camera in my less experienced bike cam days. But I thought it might be fun or interesting to run this in the background while I waffle on about all things motorcycle. It covers the journey from West Burton in the North Yorkshire Dales up towards Hawes. I hope you enjoy it. Now, I keep getting questions about these gearbox issues on the water-cooled Triumph Bonnevilles. Um, I've been struggling to get any real information on this. But I will cover off the story so far, what I know so far at the end of this video. First of all, the motorcycle sales figures for the UK for 2019. They've been released in the last week or so with some interesting results. In general, motorcycle sales are up, I think it was 1.2%, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but car sales are down considerably. So I think as far as motorcycles are concerned, that's quite a result. The top three selling motorcycles of 2019. The BMW GS1250 and the BMW GS1250 Adventure both occupy the first two positions. No surprise there, it's been like that for years, for as long as I can remember. The surprise is, however, number three. The third best selling motorcycle in the UK 2019 the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now, I knew that this bike was going to do well. It had all the ingredients there of being a winner, and I did predict last May that it was going to do well. I expected it to get into the top 10. I didn't expect it to take third place. Well done, Royal Enfield. Right, next up, Moton Customs. Surprise, surprise, they have some more new products coming up within the next month. I seriously don't know how they do it. Anyway, I was talking to Sam at Moton the other day and he made a suggestion, quite an unusual suggestion really. We were talking about customer feedback on products, which generally for Moton products is very good. And Sam had the idea that maybe it would be a good idea for me to put forward to you, the viewers, the question as to what you would like to see Motone make. Now, this is for Triumph Bonneville owners only. Air cold or liquid cold. Please leave a comment in the comments section below as to what accessories, custom parts, you would like to see from Moton. They are interested in your suggestions. Now, there's no guarantees that they will, of course, go ahead and make them, but they are interested to see what people would like. In your suggestions, could you please include which model of motorcycle you would like to see this part for, why you think that part might be popular, and what sort of materials do you think would be best suited for its manufacture? Now, to try and make this manageable for Moton Customs, can I suggest that if you do have a suggestion, please read through the comments first. If someone else has already made that suggestion, please just leave a like on that comment. It would make it easier for us to collate the results. Having said that, please leave a reply to that comment if you think it is valuable, if you've got something to input on what the previous commenter has said. I think this could be really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what people come up with. Hats off to Motone Customs for taking the initiative to get this sort of customer feedback. And who knows, maybe at some stage in the future I can produce a video showing what came of this request. Right, and a little bit more Motone news. During the next few weeks, Motone are expecting to be able to show me 
their new prototype for the Triumph Bonneville Bobber Tail Tardy. As it stands, I haven't seen any pictures of this, so I've got absolutely no idea what it looks like. Moton have been keeping it quite close to their chest. But rest assured for you Bonneville Bobber owners, I will be bringing it to your attention as soon as I can get my grubby hands on it. Also, pannier rails for the air-cooled Triumph Bonneville T100, which I believe will also fit the base EFI models. These are going to be available in the next few weeks. They're going to be the same stainless steel construction as those that they produced for the LC models, and they will be available in a choice of polished stainless steel or black, which I presume will be powder coated. Apparently, they've had literally hundreds of requests for these since the release of the LC version, which I believe is widely regarded as being the best on the market so far. So much so that Moton keep running out. I'll have a word with Sam and see if I can get my hands on a pair of these for the Air Cold T100 that I have, and I'll do a little video with a test fitting as soon as they're available. I'll let you know all about it. The vintage Michelin style tyre valve caps. Again, Merton tell me that these are going to be available in the next few weeks. I'm quite looking forward to this because they're sort of a one-off special. I've not seen anything like this anywhere else. They also have a range of brass exhaust header seals coming up in the next few weeks, as well as some gaskets for the engine cases. These will be available for both the air-cooled and liquid-cooled twins in the fullness of time. And Moton say that they have designed these to be of a better quality than the standard OEM Triumph examples, but that they're aiming to sell them at a substantially lower price. All good news for Triumph Bonneville owners as far as I'm concerned. And finally from Moton, or nearly finally, there is actually something else I need to mention. I've already actually got a prototype example of this fitted to the T120. Moton are releasing a new stainless steel chain guard for the T120, the T100 and I believe the Street Twin. It may fit other models as well, I'll have to check up on that. Now, I did intend taking some footage of the prototype that I have on the T120, but then decided against it because it's going to give the game away. As you would expect from Moton, this is an uber quality part called the Tanto. Moton are going to be releasing a limited run of these, I think, in powder coated black and polished stainless steel within the next two or three weeks. I'm told that the prototype I have was a final prototype, so what I intend doing is devoting an entire video to this in the next week or so. A Tanto is apparently a Japanese straight edge dagger or knife. I've had a look at some pictures of these and I have to say I can see exactly where the inspiration for this chain guard has come from with Moton. Again, something I'm looking forward to. Right, time's getting on. I really must get on to these gearbox issues with the water-cooled Bonnevilles. So, one final thing from Moton Customs, and that is postage. Moton Customs UK post worldwide. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in the USA, Canada, India, Australia, New Zealand, and anywhere else in between. If ships and aeroplanes travel to your country, Moton Customs can get goods to you. I am asked this question every single day, both from US customers and from Indian customers. Moton can post to you, it's not a problem. I believe Moton Customs are looking to upgrade their website to make this clearer to people, but these things take time. Just place your order in the normal way and go through the checkout process. I believe postage prices to far off places are clearly displayed before you commit yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And then that brings us to the gearbox issues with the water-cooled Bonneville Twins. It's been going on for some time, this one. I mentioned quite some time ago in a monthly roundup that there had been some issues with both the 900cc and 1200cc Bonneville Twin gearboxes. And I think at that time I'd identified around about 10 or 20 cases of it happening. Now, I got quite a bit of flack from Bonneville owners over this one, uh, quite a lot of hate mail about it. And in response to those people and anybody else who's thinking of joining in, I don't build the Bonnevilles. Uh, all I'm really doing here is reporting information that's passed to me on to you for your information. Don't shoot the messenger. You know, I completely understand that if you've just dropped a wad of cash on a new Triumph Bonneville, the last thing you want to hear is this kind of news. But at the end of the day, Triumph products are not perfect, and there's nothing I can do about that. Now, the issue itself seems to surround the selector shaft. And the symptoms, by and large, seems to be that initially gear selection becomes difficult, between certain gears and that varies from bike to bike from report to report and then eventually it sticks in one gear you can't get it out of that gear or it sticks in some sort of false neutral and you can't engage any of the gears and when this happens the only cure is for it to go into a dealership for a gearbox rebuild and as far as I can tell, on each and every occasion, it's resulted in the selector shaft having to be replaced, and in some cases, some of the cogs as well. I have emailed Triumph twice for information on this, and in both occasions, they've not responded. Now, when there is a common issue with some of their motorcycles, let's face it, Triumph does have a reputation for sweeping it under the carpet, burying the heads in the sand and keeping tight lipped about it. That is, I'm afraid, a historical fact. I know they're not on their own in doing that, other manufacturers do it as well, but that's of little comfort when you own a Triumph and you can't make any headway with the manufacturer. I know that, I've experienced it myself with the T120. Now, Triumph is a big company, and I'm sure it receives thousands of emails a day. There is the possibility that my emails have gone into the junk folder, <laughs> very likely in fact, or they've simply been missed and not answered. What I think I'm trying to say is I'm not saying that they're purposely ignoring me. There could be another explanation for it. Now, I wouldn't say that I have been inundated with reports from everybody of this issue taking place on their bikes. There was definitely a huge response initially when I released that last video. And certainly since then, there have been sort of dribs and drabs of people sort of watching the video late and telling me that they've had the same issue as well. So, sort of scraping together all the incidents reported on Facebook, reported directly to me here on this channel, reported on various Triumph Bonneville forums. I've counted about 70 to 75 individual cases of it taking place. Now it could be that some individuals that have encountered this problem have of course reported it to various different locations around the internet. I have tried to take that into account, but obviously people use different usernames, etc. It's not always possible to identify whether it is the same person or not. So that is not a definite figure, that's a ballpark figure as far as I can figure out. Now, this issue can present itself at anything from four or 500 miles up to 20,000 miles. There are people that have had to have them replaced once and then the bike apparently has been fine. But there are also reports of people that are on their fourth selector shaft. So it would seem that Triumph don't have a surefire cure for it if you do encounter this problem. Dealer response seems to range from yes we are aware there's an issue and Triumph are trying to sort it out to 
sorry mate you're the first person that's ever reported it which is a familiar one i've heard that a few times from triumph now as for why it's happening very early on some bikes and it's happening quite late on in the age of other bikes could be down to rider style or there could be other factors at play that are causing this i, I really don't know i'm guessing now on at least one triumph forum that i've looked at someone has published detailed instructions on how to strip down the gearbox replace the selector shaft and sort this issue out when it occurs now that suggests to me that bikes that are out of warranty uh, triumph is obviously not stepping up to the mark with the problem and people have been left to their own devices in order to get it rectified and i do find that a bit worrying because you know bikes that are out of warranty could still be very low mileage bikes you know they don't have to have done a lot of miles and that's further backed up by two reports i've had where people have bought triumph bonnevilles on the second hand market in the states both occasions were in the states for a bag and basement price because these bikes were out of warranty and they had this gearbox problem and in both cases the guys had bought these bikes with a view to do the repairs themselves and get a bike cheap and that's basically the story so far that's as much as i've been able to find out now as for the cause of it and I might add before I go any further, this is pure educated conjecture. It's been suggested to me that tolerances from one genuine part to another are quite variable with some of these machines. Now, right from me starting this channel and dealing with custom parts manufacturers, I was aware of frequent problems where they would design a part based on one particular model that they had to use as a pattern for designing parts and then they would find that although the part they designed fit that bike perfectly it wouldn't fit other bikes of the same model there were discrepancies in the tolerances from bike to bike now at first these were considered to be very slight design changes made as the models progressed through time but the feeling is now that that's not the case i have heard instances of you know parts being damaged or defective on a bonneville the owners bought a genuine part from triumph quoting the vin number and everything else necessary to ensure that you get the correct part and I've had three or four reports of this and either the part won't fit because it's too tight and they can't get it to fit or the part does fit but there's too much play i.e. some of the tolerances in that part are bigger than the original part that they took off and this is particularly been mentioned in the cases where people have had to replace damaged engine cases either because of corrosion or through accident damage it strikes me that this could be the root of the problem and i emphasize the words could be now as we know the triumphs are assembled in thailand but the majority of the parts are not made in thailand they come from all over asia various parts of europe there may even be some parts made in england i don't know but certainly when the components are coming from multiple originating manufacturers quality control over the specification of parts is going to be a nightmare that could be the root of this problem only time will tell rest assured i will report back on this one if anything else comes to light if this is going to be a major issue i fear it's probably going to be some years down the line where the reputation for this problem really starts to stamp its mark on you know the ownership of the triumph bonnevilles the majority of bonnevilles on the road don't do an awful lot of annual mileage so it could be a few years yet before you know what is actually happening here comes out in the wash right that's it for this week once again thank you so so much for taking the time to watch my videos 
I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like this video, feel free to leave a dislike. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this ride from West Burton to Hawes. I will of course be back next week, so until then, ride carefully and I'll see you soon. Thank you.